Yippee ki yay, it's a good day. Glad to have my friends, family. I couldn't be any more blessed. I'm serious, I mean, I've got the greatest family in the world. My two sisters, my heart attack, took care of everything. Food, shelter, utilities, truck, everything. Everything. I didn't have to wish for too much. But I would give my heart and my soul to them, the children, and the grandchildren. Any one of them. And I would be proud. This is my family. You know, just, you know, just, you know, just, it's the closest thing to God that you got. I got two great nieces. God, you hold them and it's just like, it's just, it's like, yeah, God, I know you still believe in us. I know you believe in us because you gave us these little precious things. You know? And I, and I kid their dads, I said, I'll have her skin in the deer by the time she's four. And they're all just laughing. And, and go down on the Flint River. That's where they live. And it reminds me. I'm gonna be doing. The, I'm gonna be getting me some catfish on the Flint River, cooking them up on the bank. Yes, sir. Oh, my little great nieces. Next few years. Ooh. Over at uh, Murphy's Pub, and just passed out, had a heart attack, and went straight out the back. Really? Landed on the floor, hit his head, and a and a surgeon from St. Thomas was there, took care of him, and got him up. He's going. On the ambulance and you know, to the hospital. Three heart attacks later, Jerry passed away. And that's 10 years ago. That was this year's. This is the 10th anniversary of losing Jerry. But I mean, he was the most precious soul. Man. And his eulogy, I got up and I spoke and I told about. I said, Jerry was the most good for nothing person I've ever known in my life. And everybody like, what? And I said, now let me explain. I said, Jerry would give anything for you, for anybody, without any expectation of any reward or thank you or anything. He was good for nothing. He never expected anything but. And I said, if half of us could just get you know, close to that spirit in us, we'd be wonderful people. At that time, everybody's eyes just lit up with big old tears and stuff. That was my best bud, Jerry Boyer. Oh. He saw me through a lot of shit. He was the only friend that I had that encouraged me to stay married. But when his daughter got killed in a car wreck, and my ex-wife said she didn't want anything to do with me, we were supposed to have a reconciliation meeting that night. And I told her where I was, you know, helping him that his daughter got killed. She said, well, if you think more of your drunk buddies than you do our marriage, don't come to see me. And I just couldn't live because it wasn't in my heart. I mean, I got my best buddy, my whole, you know, my whole world. His daughter got killed today. How am I going to turn my back and just walk away and say, Jerry, I can't, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm busy. You know, my marriage is about to fail. But hey, she chose that, not me. And it was like, you know, a straw that broke the camera's back, you know. I mean, I still love her. She's a good woman. She's got her own heart. I got a good son out of it, so life is still good. You know, everybody goes on. But I gotta go on as me. That's the deal. But it makes it a lot easier when you people love the people in your life. It makes you float along a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs>